friends welcome back to my channel this is sandra and today's video is going to be all about the future of cybersecurity jobs so if you guys have been watching my channel for a while now most of my videos are on cybersecurity whether it's informational or career content and i recently got a question in my comments asking about what the future job prospects of the cybersecurity field are going to look like and that's why i wanted to make this video to go over the future of cybersecurity job growth career trajectories salaries the impact of blockchain and web3 technologies whether or not more cybersecurity jobs are going to go towards remote roles and feel free to jump around the timestamps in the video as well okay so the number one thing i want to start off with is job growth i don't mean individual career trajectories but instead specifically the number of jobs that are growing in the cybersecurity sector with more and more companies coming online i do want to just start off this video with this statistic that i share pretty commonly on my channel and that is the fact that there are going to be 3.5 million jobs in cybersecurity by 2025 and these are going to be unfilled cybersecurity jobs by the way and like i mentioned earlier a lot more of the world is coming online whether it's different sectors different countries different regions of the world more and more companies are seeing the value of having a cybersecurity team or at least outsourcing cybersecurity to some kind of external third-party vendor just to give you an idea of how many websites are hacked on a daily basis around the world globally 30,000 websites are hacked daily 64% of companies worldwide have experienced at least one form of a cyber attack and just in March 2021 of last year there were 20 million breach records and in 2020 ransomware cases grew by 150% another crazy statistic 300,000 pieces of new malware are created daily and these are anything ranging from viruses adware trojan horses keyloggers and everything in between and around the world based on this 2021 statistic it's going to cost companies six billion dollars with a b to fix or remediate the impact of security events and breaches so i know these sound like crazy numbers even when i was reading these i was like there's no way it's this many or that there's this many hackers out there trying to steal people's information but a majority of these attacks are financially motivated and i didn't want to throw out these statistics just to scare you guys but i did want to show you guys the broad need of good cybersecurity professionals that are well trained have experience have the certifications needed to do their jobs and honestly there's just not enough of us out there but another question i often get is the fact that hey i've been trying to find a cybersecurity job for for a few months for a year even and i still can't get my foot in the door if there's so many cybersecurity jobs out there why can't i find one and i actually made a video on this exact topic recently and i'll link that below if you guys want to check that out but hopefully this gives you a confident yes to the answer of is there going to be growth in the cybersecurity career sector in the future okay next topic on this list is job security so of course there may be growth in the cybersecurity sector for jobs but is there actual job security if there is a recession or an economic downturn how often is the cybersecurity team going to be cut out of the budget and this answer has always been very interesting to me just because of the fact that cybersecurity doesn't does not have an obvious impact on a company's bottom line it is not a team in the organization or the company that brings in revenue for example if you're working at a bank then the finance or those on the trading desk are the ones actively bringing in money if you're working at a tech company then your software engineers are bringing in the money and you'll notice that each of these sectors whatever the teams that bring in the most revenue for the company are typically also the ones that are the most well compensated and the least likely to let go of because honestly it's just hard to find talent that's good at what they do in the specific sectors that they're in but cybersecurity from what i found after working after working at a fortune 50 company as well as now working at a much smaller company as a security analyst I've definitely seen the value of of having a cybersecurity team especially having one in-house and while i won't say that i have never heard of of layoffs or or budget cuts for a cybersecurity team i definitely feel like cybersecurity teams have good job security just because of the fact that typically typically when there are times of recession that is often the times when people really take advantage of some of the mass hysteria that may be going around and more and more people may turn to cyber crimes for example stealing credit card information trying to learn how to hack just potentially negative actions with negative consequences using the World Wide Web. And I think especially during times with economic downturn or even during times of recession, companies still need their cybersecurity teams. It's not like the market drops and then they just have to fire the cybersecurity team. That is never how it happens. So I really do think that cybersecurity is actually one of the most secure roles even in an economic downturn because of the fact that hackers don't just stop because of the fact that the markets are crashing. If anything, it would probably motivate 
motivate hackers more to do their devious things. And that would also require companies to also need to keep their cybersecurity teams. So I've made many, many videos on the salary in cybersecurity on this channel, including cybersecurity pay, how I got my six figure cybersecurity salary after college, as well as software engineer versus cybersecurity salaries, all of which I can link down in the description below. But I do want to kind of start back with your early slash entry level cybersecurity roles, just because when I was graduating college, most people I knew, at least the ones graduating from my school, and just to give some insight, I was an information science and technology major who graduated from Temple University, which is a pretty standard state school. And as part of that, most people I knew who were graduating were either going for roles in software engineering or business analyst slash data analyst if they didn't want to code, or even project managers. It was really just like people who wanted to code and people who didn't want to code. And that was before my school even had a cybersecurity degree program that I knew of. Hopefully now there's more people who are interested in cybersecurity as a field and as a potential career option. But basically everyone knew that software engineers were the roles that were going to make the most money. And I've definitely found that to of course still be the case, even though obviously I can't turn a blind eye to the software engineers at big tech companies who are making high six figure salaries and even seven figure salaries if you're working as a senior or a staff software engineer. But just coming back down to cybersecurity, most people I knew who were going into cybersecurity probably were making around 60 to $80,000 for entry level roles. And maybe if you compare this to the six figures that a software engineer would get, it might not seem like as much, but I've definitely noticed that cybersecurity salaries have been growing a lot more even just based on Glassdoor. I believe the average salary for a security analyst is somewhere between seventy to $90,000. And then the average salary for a security engineer is in like the high $90,000 to the $100,000 for a security engineer. And those are some very high numbers considering the median US household income, as well as comparing it to the average salary of college graduates or bootcamp graduates. This is a very substantial amount of money. And I actually think that this trajectory of cybersecurity salary growth overall is going to be climbing throughout the next few years with more and more cybersecurity roles going empty going unfilled more and more companies are going to start realizing that they have to properly compensate their cybersecurity professionals otherwise if that person is even just a little bit unhappy in their role they could probably pretty easily go for a new role in cybersecurity that is probably paying more with more interesting work and that honestly is just how it works with at will employment so i do think in the next two years cybersecurity salaries are going to grow significantly maybe not to the extent of the staff software engineers at Google, but I do think they're going to be pretty significant bumps in pay, as well as of course, inflation is still a thing. So that may also be another reason why salaries are going to be growing. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is remote roles in cybersecurity and what that's going to look like in the future. So I know a lot of companies right now are hiring cybersecurity positions for remote jobs. And that is of course, as a result of the pandemic and all of us being on lockdown. And now that we're out of that area, a lot of companies, a lot of professionals, especially in my previous company, our cybersecurity team was about 3,000 people and majority of people did want to stay remote or at least a hybrid model if they couldn't stay remote. So that's something that I've seen as a trend, at least in cybersecurity. I know there are other teams at my company who actually did prefer to work in person or a hybrid model, but those people were not on a cybersecurity team. They were more so on the finance teams or the HR side. So that's definitely something to note that a lot of cybersecurity professionals do prefer to work remotely or work from home at least most of the time. And I think what's key here is not specifically that they never want to come into the office Office, I think it's that we want the choice to not need to come into the office just in terms of commute time the cost of gas going crazy nowadays let me know in the comments below how much you guys pay for gas because a tank nowadays costs us about a little under a hundred dollars and that just blows my mind and it's no wonder that people don't want to commute to work anymore because it costs so much money to just get to work not to mention having to wake up earlier people who have kids may have to drop their kids off at school and then make it to work and it just made it so much easier when people were able to work from home and save time and money just to do the same work that they would be doing in an office setting and there are even statistics out there that say people are actually the same or more productive at home compared to when they're in the office so it really is a win-win for employees and companies for people to work anywhere they want to but i know there's still so many companies who are against this that's always a question i've kind of been thinking about i know there's companies who have you know booked out office space for 
you know, five, 10 year contracts and maybe they already paid for it. So they want people to come in or they want people in the office to be able to work together and collaborate in an in-person setting, which may create more team bonding and things like that. And while I agree, at least that last point is a great thing, I still don't believe that this setup works for everyone, especially after reading articles about working parents, working moms especially, that have to juggle a full-time job as well as kids, as well as everything else that life throws at us. It really goes back to the quote, you work to live, you don't live to work. And that is a quote that deeply resonates with me just because of the fact that just because my entire life purpose is not tied to my job directly, I still have other things I enjoy doing outside of work, this YouTube channel, spending time outdoors, traveling, trying new foods, everything else outside of the nine to five structure and i really think more and more people are starting to embrace that life after going through two years of lockdown and just realizing that life is really short and i don't want to go into this too much but basically i do think that remote jobs are here to stay at least in cybersecurity and with more of us especially trying to push for remote roles or at least hybrid it's really going to push the companies as well because in a sector where job demand isn't able to be met with enough candidates to apply for the jobs i really do think that as employees we definitely have the power to make that change and by the way there are actually statistics out there that say that say remote jobs actually have higher salaries higher average pay compared to people who work in the office so imagine being able to work remotely having the same or higher pay compared to someone living in new york or the bay area in california and being able to spend less time commuting with more flexibility in your work day honestly that's a win 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 for me all right last topic i wanted to touch on today is the impact of web3 and blockchain on cybersecurity careers so this is something that i've definitely been seeing a lot just because there's so many videos and things out there about how blockchain is inherently secure and security is built in and there's so many things around the blockchain that revolve around security and how web3 is the future of the internet and everything like that while i do believe that we are going to get there i also don't think that there's going to be a time when cybersecurity is going to be left forgotten just because of web3 and and blockchain technologies there are actually so many different roles out there just on a quick google search that i've seen for blockchain security engineers and even if blockchains are more secure than the typical web application one of the main causes for vulnerabilities and exploitable weaknesses is human error and you can still get that with blockchain and web3 technologies typically a lot of security issues come out from human errors in setting up a blockchain or just working with web3 technologies in general and while i do think right now is a time when cyber security careers are really booming just because a lot of companies are coming online i'm sure decades maybe even hundreds of years down the line if by then hopefully climate change has not wiped us out and we're still alive to be able to go on the internet and do things and do things online then sure maybe there may be a time when cybersecurity has been taken over by ai you know hundreds of years down the line that's just how it might be but at that point there may be different jobs out there in the cybersecurity field that i won't even try to guess at this point because a lot of the cybersecurity jobs that are available today did not exist 20, 50 years ago. Not many people were even thinking about cybersecurity. So if you think about it, cybersecurity careers have really just have really just started to grow in the last 20, 30 years or so. And as they say, with all with all tech careers and tech sectors, you should always be constantly learning and growing so that if there is a change in the sector, then you're already learning the skills, the tools, and the experience that you need to get to that next level or make a career change to that next big thing in cybersecurity. I don't remember who told me this quote, but someone once told me that the key to career security and job security is being a lifelong learner just because you're always learning about new trends, new tools that you can use, new skills and companies out there. So that's definitely not something I would worry about too much, at least for right now. All right, that's it for this video let me know if you guys found it helpful and if you have any questions in the comments below as well as any future video topics that you might like to see from me don't forget to join our discord channel that is linked in the description below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye